Hello everyone, um, I am recording this video uh, to give you a mini lesson on the an introduction to the nutcrackers. So this is going to be kind of a summary of the pre-reading activities plus some other important information that uh, I think it's important to know to have a framework of the story before we actually start reading this story. So what is this presentation about? Let's start. So we are going to see some of the versions of the Nutcracker story to compare certain uh, aspects of these stories. Then we are going to have a look at the E.T.A. Hoffman's biography. Uh, then we uh, will dig into the genre, which is fantasy, and see something about fairy tales. Then we are going to uh, mention the characters in the Nutcracker so you can uh, have them in mind when when reading the story and uh, also I think we are going to mention only not analyze pretty much but just uh, to have an idea of the archetypes in fairy tales so I would like to have a look first at the version of the story the Nutcracker so there are three versions of this story uh, which uh, were written by these three authors. The first one is the E.T.A. Hoffman version called Nutcracker and Mouse King. So this version was written in 1816 and this one has been described as the darkest version of the three. And uh, why would be that? Why is it so dark? Well, to start with, the uncle, uh, which is a secondary but important uh, character, Rosal Mayer, is a bizarre character. He is ugly and has a strange relationship to his niece. Also the um, Mouse King has seven heads which is a very strange description and it is uh, a, a very evil character. Later the second version was simply called The Nutcracker and this was written by the French author Alexandre Dumas. This uh, version is a, a softer version, or a version which eliminates all of these darker things that the original one had, and also changed the name of the protagonist, uh, from Mary to Clara. Then, based on the same version, uh, Tchaikovsky created the ballet The Nutcracker in 1892. This version added a, a very important character now, which is the Sugar Plum Fairy. This uh, new character added a certain uh, fa fantasy aspects that the, the ballet permits to appreciate more than actually in the book. In the book, I think, uh, well, this is my opinion, it, it wouldn't have any, any relevance at all. So let's have a look at now at the biography. So uh, you have work on the biography and the first workshop that we we done. So I think that we are only going to mention certain aspects instead of mentioning one by one. So to start with, uh, Hoffman was born in the German Empire in the Kingdom of Prussia in a city called Königsberg. That nowadays it's Kaliningrad, something like that. In it is a city in Russia. Uh, he died in Berlin, the same uh, modern-day Berlin in Germany. Well, because of your history lessons, you may know that Europe looked very different at how in, in this map is. So if you if you want to know a bit more of that, I think that you could just watch this video that I attached to this presentation and this would explain a bit more. I think I think it is important because uh, uh, this author uh, he is very critical of the po political figures of his time. So it, it is important maybe to know all about that. What does the ETA mean? This is the name of this author. It's important to know because he changed it. This was not the original name. His birth name was Ernst Theodor Wilhelm Hoffmann, and he changed it to. Ernst Theodor Amadeus Hoffman. Why does he change his name? Uh, he changed it because he kind of made a tribute to uh, this composer, Mozart, a famous Austrian composer. 
Well, another aspect that are important to mention in his uh, biography is that he had a very bad childhood. He was uh, raised by an uncle and an aunt. And this is clearly reflected in the Nutcracker, in the story. We see that the uncle has a major role, uh, an important role in the story. And Marie, although she has a, a family, she seems to be a bit uh, isolated. So she is kind of a, the character that eats uh, all the time by, he, by, by herself with her own imagination. So continuing with the biography, uh, Hoffman went to university to study law. Um, probably he followed the tradition of his father, because his father also was a lawyer. And in 1814 he managed to work as a judge in Berlin, which is kind of a big achievement for him. He also was a painter and an illustrator, and as you could see in these caricatures of political figures, he, he was very critical. He also was a writer and composer, and these are some other of his uh, stories. The Golden Pot, which is a modern retold story of the classical fairy tale. The Sandman, a story in which a man falls in love with a wom woman that turns out to be a robot. Very interesting. And The Life and Opinion of Tom Cat Moore. This is an autobiography of a, a cat, also a very nice story interesting to read at so let's have a look at now the genre fantasy so fantasy it's a very broad genre which uh, here in this category you you, you can have uh, everything that it is uh, made up or comes out from the author's imagination so uh, there, there are two divisions in this uh, genre, which are the traditional fantasy and the modern and contemporary uh, types of fantasy. I think that this is kind of a historical division more than actually a, a category uh, based on different characteristics of this type of fantasy. The traditional fantasy uh, has all of the oral tradition that was maybe later written by other authors like the Grimm Brothers or Charles Perrault, for instance. So here we have fairy tales, folk tales, tall tales and fables. While our story is set more in this other category, the modern and contemporary. Why? Because uh, this one clearly has an author and uh, maybe takes some aspects of fairy tales but it is not an actual fairy tale. A fairy tale typically tends to be a love story. This one it is not. So, uh, in the modern and contemporary category, we have high fantasy and low fantasy. In the high fantasy category, uh, the story is completely set in an imaginary world, a completely made up world. So, everything is fantastic. While in the low fantasy type of story, the, the story is set in a more realistic setting, in a uh, common real uh, city and there is a door or a magical portal somewhere where it is connected to this uh, fantasy. Well in my opinion I think that the Nutcracker may fit this category more because the story is, is set in a probably a German city that we don't know the name. Uh, Dumas clearly uh, points out that this city is Nuremberg, but in the ETA Hoffman's story, we don't know that, but it, it is clearly a German city. And then uh, the fantasy comes uh, at a certain point. So this is uh, interesting to, to, to know, to look at, and this one give us actually very important information. So who are the characters in the Nutcracker? There are five main characters, as you could see, but there may be more secondary characters. The first one and the protagonist is Marie Stachbaum, uh, also called Clara in another versions. Fritz Stachbaum, um, her brother, Uncle Drossel Mayer, also has a very important role. The Nutcracker, that you could see it at the bottom in this picture. The Mouse King also uh, important, the villain, the antagonist, 
and sometimes the sugar plum fairy which is added in the version of the ballet and other uh, versions you could see let's have a look at the archetypes so to start with an archetype is a, a stereotype but of a character in a book a, a fictional character so as you could see in this diagram there are many many different archetypes there are heroes, prizes, dispatchers, helpers, villains, and antagonists or failures. So I think that we're going to have a look just at some of them. For instance, the hero in the case of, um, of Marie, she is a, a born under a lucky star type of hero, which is a, very similar to Cinderella, for instance. Prices. The Nutcracker itself is a prize, and he will turn out to be a prince. And I wouldn't tell you anything else because I don't want to spoil the story. The idea is that you can read it. Helper. Uncle Drossel Mayer is a type of donor helper because he provides the hero with the Nutcracker, which uh, will then later be something else. You will know later when you read the story. And villains. So what type of villain do we have in the story? Um, I would say that the Mouse King is a rampaging villain, which means that he is incredible, incredibly destructive, or actually he, he is very violent. From the very start, he wants to take uh, the control of the whole uh, magical kingdom, and that makes him a rampaging villain. Well, I think that with all of that framework of information, you could start reading The Nutcracker, and I hope that you enjoyed, and we could meet together in the classroom uh, sometime. So I hope that you have enjoyed this video, and this has been helpful and educational for you. So see you soon. Goodbye.